people, including all beings, are manifestations or disguises of the total reality behind this cosmos. All you truthers don't understand that I had to look into my psychology to understand you. You're all belligerent combatives. You're all oppositional defiant. You all take up positions to find a cause to justify your meaningless existence. You'll fight anybody to act like you're self-righteous and true. And it doesn't get you good results, okay? When I see all these people who want to start all the interactions with everybody, not with God-given rights, not with the law of the land, not with freedom and principles, not with process on how to enslave ourselves, but let's argue over the shape of the planet. I start thinking you're a fucking agent. These people won't even listen to legal and lawful God-given rights, property, and freedom and principles. You're not incredible. You're fucking inept. You have no self-awareness and awareness of others. You, 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 you're, you're defiant, right, and resistant, and you're not received well when you're out in the public. And that's the difference between you and I. Write it down. You're a fucking moron. So I see right through all you motherfuckers. I don't give a fuck what comes out of your mouth. Love and light. Ascension. We're all coming together for truth and freedom. You're full of shit. People in the middle of, of nowhere who have everything they need and can co-create with nature and are in touch with the Tao, the way to the way, they don't consider you wise. They consider you to be a bunch of mentally and emotionally ill folks who have personality disorder. I know why you do what you do. I don't care if you won't tell anybody. I know me, so I know you. You're not the centric point of this universe. All right? At best, if you want to be, it's an I am that am presence. Confront the cause and effect. Bring the solution. You're a fucking slave. I and others have brought the solution. You won't embody it. You don't want to be a free man or woman. So don't come to me and tell me I'm raining on your parade because I'm doing what the fuck you won't. It's not that you can't. It's you won't because you're a fucking coward. Because if you don't stand for rights, freedom, and principles, you don't get them. That means you've taken mine. I don't accept that. Right? I don't respect that because you don't have a right to give up your rights. They're God-given. God can take them away. You have to embody them. If you don't, you've done wrong. You're unjust. You're an infidel. I'm talking into your spirit. I'm talking objective truth. I'm telling you what the fuck needs to happen or else. When the or else comes, I don't want to hear it. Don't you want personal choice? Don't you want property rights? Don't you want ability to defend yourself? Don't you want the fascism to end? I want to vomit how easy it is to mind and heart control the majority of these fucking slaves. You got to put the work in. You got to put the time in. You got to show up for yourself and others. You got to have conviction. You got to live your information. You ain't doing that. They're not sitting in a fucking hole for a year viewing themselves and reflecting and trying to find a space of peace and empowerment. They're not doing any of it. The court doesn't know you. Policy enforcement doesn't know you. The DA doesn't know you. The U.S. corporation doesn't know you. The feds don't know you. If they do know you, it's for being a loser failure and fucking up your own affairs and mismanaging it and having to go to jail at best. This is way deeper than rap. This ain't about no court. This is about taking your soul and keeping you here for thousands of years. I suspect I can't prove it. When you can't be nice and kind and polite with these people. You got to be a godly, righteous man, and you can't be an infidel, and you can't be equally yoked with infidel. You got a duty to render aid. You got a duty to uphold God's law. You got a duty to exercise your rights. Why the fuck ain't you doing it? But we can get in our ego and compete with each other over bullshit, or we can really be honest with ourselves and each other about where the fuck we failed ourselves and our family and our future and our lineage. Fucking Gorilla Gems, man. Heavy. Heavy. Heavy in these streets. In these streets, like Tommy says. Hey, that's good shit, though, uh, Gorilla Gems. Do more of that, man. I wish people would do more of that. I like that. That was dope. I like that. <clears throat> All right. Where do we want to take this today? We're just going to play the live, the Charleston White Live, but they never liked that. People never liked that. They complain. Not enough. I don't know. What are you, what are you folks in chat thinking? What's, what's on your mind today? Hear what's on your mind and heart.
and Rob likes Charleston. African Americans always like Charleston white. White folks very easily upset. Does Gorilla Gems have a channel? Uh, I think he does, but he's putting them on private for now. I actually almost. It's a combination between me preferring that and it being like, I know what makes sense. You know, um, he could do whatever he wants. I'm just saying, like, like Cotflix has his own channel, and most of the videos get a couple hundred views. Yeah, I mean, it would be like cool for the channel if he would put those up and then leave them private like that, and then I could upload them to this channel or to the original channel because I want to kind of keep that I want to keep that first channel active I want to be uploading stuff to that channel Paul and slave so if he could if if he can make one of those it's not too much on him and he's not really looking for anything from it and yeah I'll just I'll upload those on the Paul and slave channel but uh, yeah, Gorilla Gems, you got to let me know what you're looking for, man. If you're just looking to make cool videos and have them seen be out there and then see where it goes, then that's cool. You know, if, you, if you're if you looking to like build a channel and get people over there, that's cool too. You know, we'll figure out what it is. Your thoughts on the Sound of Freedom released on <clears throat> 4th of July. I don't know what that means. Sound of Freedom. I went to the to the black panel this morning. They won't let me up. Antoine's I got I got to reach out to Antoine, man. He's I don't know what he's up to lately. He's fucking up. Dropping the ball. He's got all these poor broke black people who can barely speak. Okay, it's it's a fucking embarrassment, Antoine. Seriously. Like, well, you can't find any black people that could talk. Moderate. Do I have to come over there? You need the white gorilla over there to get 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 these people in line. I fucking, I go over to Antoine's Fight Club this morning. They just leave me sitting back there. You motherfuckers are racist, like inherently racist is what I notice. Y'all try to say you're not, and you know, we talk the race shit, but we're really not racist. We just talk it to like get controversy. No, nah, you guys are inherently racist. Watched it. It's like, it's like if you're black, you go up immediately. If you're something that they consider as not black, you don't go up. All right. So, at least from the beginning. Now, it might just have switched. Like, not only do you not go up because you're not black, you're also Paul Unslaved. And his moderator people, I think, don't like me. So, you know, Antoine's like full-on daddy over there. He tells all those slaves what to do, and they fucking, they, they just sit around all day arguing over Antoine. How he, like, gave them power. It's pretty pathetic. But, you know, I come in there to liven shit up, and it's like I sit in the back. They don't even let me up when my face is there. Bizarre. Bizarre uh, racist inclinations and or um, inability to add something to the interaction that would be better for everybody. Kind of like Talcott last night, you know. They don't know where the good shit's at, you know. Too much in their, in their beliefs and their feelers know where the good content the good content is at. Evan are you in chat <laughs> over Antoine scraps they're fighting over Antoine scraps Yeah. <laughs> hey, Aaron, my, my bad, my bad. Because it's for Nightish, man. Y'all show Nightish love. Buying for scraps and begging. Else, Why y'all want to show Nightish love? Begging for $20. I had to find out. Wait, what what oh, my bad, my bad. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I didn't realize. I'm joking. I don't be caring. Y'all know I'm I'm fucked. I'm fucked. Well, that, like what you just said, Ben. You said, oh, so, so to all y'all fake comedians, that's some hating shit, dog.
being jealous of Damn, uh, Will got, got hit, hit with a twenty dollar ball. I'll show the. I'll show it. Just give me a second. Um, Damn. But Will got hit. Oh, Will. No, it's because so right? Oh, you stop talking about that. These hoes ain't loyal. Look, here's, here's the thing, right? When I say I'm jealous, what I mean. These hoes ain't loyal. You see how that whole time while Cheeky was doing his back and forth with Angry Man. And Renault was sitting there like no white people allowed at Antoine's right? nightclub. Do you see how when Angry Man got dropped, is left? But then when Angry no Man pink came gorillas back, allowed. is came back because he was like, "I'm not gonna let y'all tag up on my man." That's the type of shit I'd be it's jealous. Cheeky, of. We see it, bro. You good, bro. right? You That's the type of shit I'd be jealous. Camera of. Fall I'd, be jealous of. <laughs> I'd be jealous of niggas having that kind of loyalty, that kind of brotherhood with motherfuckers and shit. You know what I'm saying? But beans, because this is my homeboy for almost thirty years in real life. I, I, like, I got you. I got you. I'm not judging it. I'm not judging it. I'm oh, literally no, 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 no. judging it. <laughs> okay, wait, but I'm not judging it. I'm literally acknowledging it. Yes, I'm acknowledging it, and I'm saying like, I'm saying like, I wish it was like that for me. Right, so I, that's I, I the type of the bias. The bias. Come on, Cleveland, get over there, man. Go talk to your people, not, like, bro. Like, oh, Mike, we go, hey, man, favoritism. I say, yeah, I acknowledge this stuff, right? Yeah. Other people be like, me, angry man. We go at it all the time. I'm not biased. Yes, you are. Yes, you are biased. Cleveland and Slyshaw, you got to go over there and talk to your people. Being racist again. Go, hey, you favoritism. I say, you get mad at me because I don't believe in treating everybody. The same. They're hating but again. I don't they don't. They won't. It they won't let now the gorilla out. Front. Everybody yeah. ain't gonna get treated. Well, the same. hey, you know, yeah. fat. I'm not, hey, I'm not hey, look. Hey, look. You know what? Fatty was biased when it came oh, to JP. People, too. Wait, wait, Aaron, you know? wait, hold on, hold on, Aaron, Aaron. How could you say? <laughs> wait, wait, Aaron. What am I lying about? Like, no, listen. When oh, he so, just so, said, so, wait, hold on, Aaron. Let me say. Let me say. When he just said, yo. You defend, um, 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 you defend Angry Man. You got down when when he kept getting taken down, whatever the case may be. I said, Yeah, that's my home. Boy. Clowns. Like 30 years in the whole metaverse full of clowns, so clowns in the circus. I'm gonna so, treat so him ask, different okay. than I treat other people. That's that's but without I also a doubt. I heard you say, Hey, come to Israel's channel, it's unbiased. I'm an unbiased person. Have you not said that? Yeah, okay, yeah. What, what oh, okay. I mean, you want fam, but two things can't be true at the same time. Whoa, no, Listen, no, 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 no. Let, let me let me ask Aaron. Hold on, hold on. Aaron, unbiased meaning, meaning this and is they the block only me person on the unslaved account. Well, I don't belong. And here. Antoine's getting ad money for these two. Damn. Brianna, Roger, they don't belong here. And Jemmy shouldn't be here. Damn, they're fucking. Oh, hold on. Hungry, Aaron. hungry and thirsty. Twenty dollars to kick people out. Fucking ads just for fighting and argument and nonsense. Clowns, not going to let me. This is the trigger of some of these slaves. Oh, let me just finish. When I'm saying I'm unbiased, meaning I'm unbiased across the board, like for everybody else, Antoine needs not me. in the same category as everybody else. Neither, neither. You know, I was laying in bed. There he goes, another forty. They're over there begging, man. I never seen so many black people with so much money to wait. Well, I'm lying. I'm lying. But waste on shit like this. I mean, it used to be like black people. I know they go, you know, buy some new clothes, some additions to their vehicle. Maybe go trick and mac on some hoes, go to the strip club a little bit. They're on here throwing twenties for like comments and, and kicking people out who are arguing about nothing. I'm pretty sure Antoine stole this bit from me too and just made it infinitely worse. But yeah, I mean, you know, and I'm not hating Antoine. I'm sure he's not listening. He's busy today. Uh, I was laying in the bed last night and Jennifer goes, you know, she just came out of nowhere with it. She's like, you know, you don't have to do anything different because none of these motherfuckers are as good at broadcasting as you are. And I'm like, now, 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 Jennifer, come on. I know what you're doing. I'm trying to pad my ego. And she's like, no, seriously, like, Antoine, none of these people, like they don't have what you have. They can't do what you do. Um, they're just not you. They can't broadcast like you. I mean, that made me feel good. 
gave me a little um <laughs> gave me a little boost you know there's a lot of these women sitting around you know, these bozos they're like thinking in their head man like antoine's got it like that he's doing his thing you no, know, she doesn't feel that way, right? So it's nice to have uh, women in your life who support you and see your vision. Um, I don't want to say look up to you, but have a certain level of respect. So, Antoine, according to Jennifer, you need my help, buddy boy. It's this. I don't know what this is. It's not working. It's not working for me. So, it's not working for anybody. Racist panel members not letting pink and brown spotted people up because they're not, they, they think they're not melanated, uh, fighting and arguing over nonsense. We got to bring something more to this, Antoine. We got to work together for the people. That's really what it's always about, right? These motherfuckers all want to use Antoine and everyone else. I really don't care. Antoine's the guy here right now. He's got a platform. Uh, he understands some success, he understands success on one level. But we got to, we got to up the content. We got to up the conversation and the conscious and awareness. It's just, isn't this shit boring for you? I don't care that there's viewers and you guys are stacking money. Great. That's great. But aren't you bored? Right? Like as a creative person, as an artist, as a human fucking being, aren't you fucking bored with this low level shit? You want to take it somewhere, do something different. You guys are okay just making money and getting views and being like everybody else. What's up with that? I have some fucking ethic. I have some fucking morals and scruples. Where are we at? Praising the white gorilla. Yeah, I'm verbally running circles around most people and they can't hang. Well, yes, that is true. Got some administrator videos. Bring that up to your face. Talking about this? Yeah, that's what I wanted. I needed a microphone to just fucking power over everyone. I'm on the panel. I don't even have to yell anymore. I'm just talking. They hear me over everyone. Going in later. These guys talking about anti-white bias in the media. Oh, yeah. There's, there's tons of anti-white bias. I'm not white, but I definitely see it because everyone thinks I'm white. Look like you got chin. You ever box? Not officially. I mean, there's a handful of times we box in the fucking, you know, area we were at. But I'm not really into that, man. You know, I'm not going to sit here and I could just tell whatever stories and people would, you know, like they like everyone else does, just tell stories and make shit up and then hope that nobody's going to like, you know, go check into the facts. But uh, boxing's not really my thing, man. If I'm not angry at somebody uh, and we're wearing like pillows on our hands, something happens. You know? First of all, I really don't like fighting anyway. I really don't want to do it. Um, if I'm going to do it, I have to kind of uh, be compelled to do it. You know, you got to kind of either, I guess, get me angry or even that I kind of control my anger. So you got to kind of give me no other choice, really. Um, there's just no, it's not my thing, right? Pretty big guy. I don't really have uh, a lot of wind you know, for the long term. I smoke a lot. So uh, it's just not, it's not, it's, it's not something that's kind of uh, fit for me. <clears throat> the whole thing, right? I don't like boxing because I, re I feel like I never really hit the person. That's what you're into and that's what you're going to do. It just doesn't feel right. You go to hit somebody and it just doesn't feel same as hitting them with your hand so just the, the whole thing is just not for me i get hit with that thing getting hit with that thing gives me a headache it's not like it's not it feels to me completely different than anything else and i just don't like it it's not it's not true to life from the giving and receiving end doesn't make any sense to me. If you're going to do all that, you may as well just do whatever you're going to do. Spar. 
without anything on your hand. Yeah, that's not really my game. You know, when it comes to interactions like that, I'm not really trying to compete. I'm not Conor McGregor. I don't claim to be a better boxer or MMA guy than anyone else. If you put me in that position, I'll defend myself, uh, and I'm pretty much going to get up on you and pick you up and throw you on the ground. <laughs> that's, that's usually the way it goes. I mean, I could, I got pretty quick hands uh, for somebody who's big, and I hit hard, but it's not, it's not my, not my natural style, right? I guess like a rhinoceros or something. You know, gets in close and it, it uses its, its body. They auctioned me off for a hundred. Oh, you went up and got, see, this is what I mean, man. They're just about pimping, making money. Like every once in a while, I'll put the counter up because I think it's funny, actually, when people add to it, you know, they're over there basically using the audience as a way to control the conversation and to make money. They know if they bring somebody up who's not their people, they're going to pay for them to throw them out. So I, I like, I'll do that. And then when people get down to zero, sometimes I don't even throw the person out override it i like when i bring tommy or someone in and people are fighting uh, and i put five minutes on and then people start throwing me contributions to add time because they want to see him loop and act like a fool um but yeah the, you know this is why i don't respect most people i really don't give a fuck what antoine thinks i really don't give a fuck if i talk myself out of more shit like i always do i really don't care <laughs> you know People even say to me, you know, in the moment, you're like diplomatic. It feels like you're kind of moving stuff out of the way. Yeah, and then a couple of days goes by. And I'm like, you know what? I don't give a fuck. We could work together. It could be a great conversation for everybody. But if that's not the case, I really don't give a fuck. Because, again, like my father, they say I got daddy issues. And I got issues with, with most people. I want to be real about it. I got issues with most people. So um, I don't respect them show me in certain areas where I shouldn't respect them. Certain areas I should, other areas I shouldn't, and usually the most important areas. So, you know, we go over it day to day. You don't stand our rights, freedom, principles, and spiritual faith. I really don't want to know you. If, or if you're not interested in it, right? If you don't and you're interested in it, then, you know, we could, we could have a mutual understanding. That's where you're at. This is where you want to go. Okay, great. If you're not interested in it, you don't want to be interested in it, and you know the value, I really don't want to fuck with you. I don't know you. And I don't respect you. And that's the way it's got to kind of be. So entertainment, conversation, information aside, <laughs> man to man. That's just how it is with me. So, sure, I'll continue to talk myself out of plenty of money and pussy and opportunities uh, when what I am and what I see is truth. You're a flat bill, man. Yeah, I don't know what that means. Elaborate on that. What does that mean exactly? I gotta, I gotta cut my hair today. I'm starting to do that thing where it sticks out. I gotta cut my hair. I gotta look good for Antoine and the boys over at Slave Club. It's a flat bill, man. What is that? Mike is huge as fuck. I don't know what to tell you. Any good sound. The bigger it is, the better the sound. Oh, a hat. No. I guess if we're, we're going to evaluate hats now, uh, I'll bring the picture up. I don't do the, I don't do the completely flat hat to my knowledge. It's more, it's more like it's got to be in my hand than I do something really even think about it uh, what i remember about myself no i don't do the whole completely flat hat deal there's got to be a little something to it right? just a little bit i guess more flat than it is rounded we're evaluating the hat style now So not completely, 
not completely flat. It's got a little bit of a little bit of rounding to it. Some of them I may round more than others. But this is this is what's important to people. What you do with your fucking hat. R. Yeah, I leave the sticker on because if you take it off, there's like a fucking light circle there. You take it off and there's a big circle on it. Or if you take it off, that sticker, that sticky stuff is on it, and then it gets dusty, dusty. Hat right is all okay. He's got a. Uh, at least you don't tuck your ears. No, I don't tuck my ears. It's some kind of a coded lingo. Kind of a feminine process. Tuck. I'm not a tucker, pal. No tucker Carlson and no tucking ears. That's the hat club. Just dropping. <laughs> What about the nasty hat club? I'm not the nasty hat club. That's that's, that's, that's uh, pristine. That was back when I lived in civilization, right? When I had my own apartment area, my own enclosure, everything was kept clean. I bathed regularly. Then I became Paul unbathed. Went out into a hole. Stopped bathing as regularly. All of my hats and clothes got dusty, dusty, uh, and I just kept it moving, right? I didn't even really go and buy all the new shit. I could have went and replaced everything, but I didn't, because who gives a fuck? Am I right? Uh, I'm the value. If I want to walk around town, uh, nothing but black t-shirts that are left, pretty much. A couple gray t-shirts, a couple maybe blue t-shirts. Whatever camo pants I got left. That's what I'll do. I'm the value. I don't need to be draped in silver and gold. At some point I will though. Why shouldn't I? I am the god of all media. I am the white gorilla. I'm constantly dropping gems and giving value here. Shouldn't I look nice when I'm out and about? You know, I'm 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 just like that. Just like that. I don't like seeing shit get fucked up and wasted. Right? Even if it's food, obviously. Obviously looking at me, I don't waste food. I don't like buying clothes and then keeping them nice. And then if I go out on the land, they get all fucked up and dusty, dusty, as Daddy Antoine says. And then if I replace them again and it happens again, I feel like I'm fucking destroying the clothes. I'm wasting them. I'm not keeping them the way that they should be. So I'd rather just do without them till I get to where I need to be. And then I could just get them again and not have that happen. I don't know. Maybe it's a me thing. I'm not as free with letting go as I could be. Why I need Antoine. I need Antoine to business coach me. I could be more free to let go of fiat. My spending summary can be crazy. But yeah, at some point, you know, uh, as Curtis Jackson says, uh, part of the media broadcasting game in any fashion is you got to have a look about you, apparently, they say, for the slaves. You got to have something that draws people in, something different about your look. I think that's why Antoine comes on live with a Yoda hat on. It's very unorthodox, but definitely a conversation starter, I'd say. So, yeah, I, I've said it before. I went to look into it. Uh, they want like 30, 40% markup on all jewelry, and you know how I am. And when, you know, folks are contributing and supporting, it's like, it's not even my money. Not my money, and I want it now. It's the opposite of J.G. Wentworth. Still, you know, I don't want to be greedy and selfish and frivolous. Spending summary. So, yeah, I got my eye out. Uh, if I see a nice big gold chain that could be kept as an investment, and secured over time, uh, I'll get that and throw it on. Pimping Mac on these hoes on here a little bit because I know they love it so much. Start a conversation, get the haters out of the woodwork. They love that. Uh, yeah, I'm not. I'm not forcing anything. I'm not in a rush. I like 
where I'm at. I like what's been going on. Um, I see a core group of people and a few folks coming here and there as time goes on. Uh, that's good enough for me. You know, I don't need to necessarily jump out the window and rebrand and create a whole image uh, in order to pimp and Mac. But uh, there's a part of me that wants to do it. Because I also want to test everybody who's been riding from the beginning. Like if I come out with a bunch of new shit, I come on with you know gold chain. I mean, they go, oh fuck, Paulie boy, he's like worldly and evil now, and he's chasing bags and disappointed us. Are we gonna play that game, right? Like I've switched up, I've changed to him what I am. I've reinvested in a different way. Interested to do that process. I'm also interested in doing the process of seeing if all little hoes online uh, will all of a sudden gather around me because they see me with a fucking chain on, like they do all these other slaves, right? Forget about what he's talking about. What does he do? You know, how does he help people? How is he changing himself in the world? He's got a gold chain on. He's got to be getting to the bag. So now all of a sudden we're interested. I'm, I'm fascinated by these dynamics, exploring them and see how they express. Playing with them, right? Doing something with it. I like your new video on the main channel. Thank you, sir. Thank you. It's not my video. Uh, Gorilla Gems made it. I like it as well, and that's why I posted it. We got to keep that. <laughs> we got to keep that first channel alive. Keep it. Um, keep the energy going on there with something. Real flat lately. Yes, holographic sticker on the hat. They're still talking about the hat. Christy Lee Doll says she'll always love me. <clears throat> she's, she's posting naked pictures on her thing now. Or at least you're posting real pictures instead of all these cartoon pictures. I couldn't see. I looked, at, looked like you were. Yeah, you got, you got cleavage there now. Showing it all off, putting it out there. Well, it's good to know that you'll always love me. You still haven't offered me a complimentary hand job. You offered it because it's a warrior and hard hat, but not me. I'm just saying. You know, a lot of people say they love me, but when it comes time to giving out hand jobs, it's everybody but me. That's a little bit concerning. You grow any of your own food. I was at one. I was at one point when I was on the land. <clears throat> now back in suburban slavery, waiting. For the completion, certain things over on the land, digging stuff up, doing certain things, uh, putting a septic in there, power and other stuff. So at this point, I decided to come back here, hurry up and wait. We'll see where it goes when we get down there. But that's the plan. That's what was going on at first uh, last year. So a little bit of that was going on. Nothing necessarily self-sustainable yet, but that's the point. You work on it. You, know, you work toward it. Yeah, me, yeah, me and Rob Cleveland are going to have to pick up at some point and get all these white women to one area. Figure, you know, Rob Cleveland's a pretty that's a, that's a power couple right there. That's a sex symbol duo. Get all the white women. Get all the women. Black, white, yellow. Rob Cleveland doesn't discriminate. But typically he likes obese white women. That's his type. <clears throat> so Cleveland, I won't interfere. You can have all the obese white women you want. Mike is cutting on at times. I'm so sick of this fucking piece of shit. Is that better? Is that better? Hello, hello, hello. Hello, hello, hello. Yeah, I'm not really into obese white women. Ironically enough, I'm not into any obese women. I know that that sounds unfair. One might say, how dare you not be into obese women when women have to be into you being obese if they're going to be with you at all? And I go, yeah, well, uh, there's different rules to this shit. Well, I'm a man. Men throughout time didn't have to be in fucking perfect shape with all different types of cuts and muscles. It's 
ridiculous. I'm a man who, back in the day, if you met me, you'd fucking jump all over me because you know this motherfucker's eating good. He's not poor. He's not some poor, lowly peasant slave. Well, see, that's that. We're going back to that time. You meet one of these skinny slaves out on the street, you already know he's like treated. You know what I'm talking about. He's treated. He's got some fucking BD, most likely. You know, he's poor and broke. Um, basically almost homeless, you know, like penile power, Luma slavery, all these skinny slaves. They're like borderline homeless. They're lost and confused. And they're not eating well. They're not getting the proper nutrition. Someone like me, you see me out and about, you go, that guy. You guys like, was he a landowner or something? Is he like a, was he some kind of God King philosopher? People buying into all these statues. Remake the statue. Like one day they'll do a statue of me. All of a sudden I'll have an eight pack. But that wasn't real. You see when they remade the movies of all the Romans and the togas, they look like me. Who's going to trust a skinny slave in battle? Right? If we had to go to battle or we had to like pick up equipment, if you have to carry a damsel. Who's going to trust some skinny little weak ass slave? All right. Go ask them about me. You talk about me having a stomach or whatever else. I'll pick up anything. I can even pick up one of Rob Cleveland's ex girlfriends. That's at least 240. You know, they're coming in about 240. So I pick up 240 pretty much over my head. All that 300 nonsense with all these skinny little slaves. They're at the gym all day. Men didn't have time for that. Men were too busy fucking. Eating and fucking and philosophizing. Didn't have time like these, these men nowadays acting like hoes at the gym all day looking in the mirror like this. In the mirror trying to check the back of their arm and the back of their leg. They didn't do that. They didn't even have mirrors. Nobody even knew what they looked like. Nobody knew what they looked like because nobody had mirrors. They had to rely on everybody else telling them what they look like. That's the problem. Everybody's so vain, looking in the mirror, worrying about this, worrying about that. We need to go back to the days of no mirrors where no one knows what they look like themselves, and they have to live on the, the honor of their beingness, what they could create from the inside out. <clears throat> Thoughts? Expert panel? All right, you hear that? Oh, man. Nothing like that. That was a little bit of a test where I went to an expert panel that wasn't there. And you heard the golden <clears throat> sounds of silence. Reminds me of the old days. Remember when I used to just come on? Smoke reefer and just babble nonsense. Yeah, those were the good days. Before the panels, before the hate, before the controversy, before the projections, before the insecurities, the jealousy, the envy, all came out in the woodwork. <clears throat> all the upstagers who want to come in here and try to outshine the master and embarrass themselves time and time again. What a shame. Why we can't have demo crazy. Most communities and villages don't work. Most people just can't recognize greatness and leadership when, when they see it. Before the numbers drop. Yes, exactly. Exactly. You go back to my old videos when it was just me, two, three thousand every time, just me. Bring up eight, ten more people, 1.4. Thousand people checked out. Like half the audience checked out because these fucking panel members are so horrible. 
even though I constantly make it into something. I always make it into some kind of gold one way or the other. Well, that's how it goes. You know, when you're a man of the people, see? When you're a man of the people, you turn it back over to the people, and whatever happens, happens. And also, I didn't do race politics either, like Antoine. I didn't say only white people up here. No, everybody. This was an inclusive, safe space. No one cared. I prefer non-panel. D spiraling over one little comment. So now you got Satanic Warrior who's still going? Still going again? About him being boring? Or you saying he's boring? Sorry. Sorry, he's not actually boring. You probably said he was boring, but he really wasn't. Yeah, don't yoke yourself with them. Just kick them. See, nobody likes any of you. Right? I tried to create a space where we could all thrive together and flourish because I wanted a community. You know, I wanted a panel. I wanted something to like support me and to lean on at times. Nothing. Well, I did have Wizard in case anybody wanted U.S. code constantly. Hey, you want some U.S. code? Anybody? Anybody? I got seconds and thirds. Nothing? All right. We'll wrap that up for later. My life is a joke, Lauren. Still better than yours. Gotta be honest. That's what's great about this walk, right? Having very low standards and not being egoic and ambitious is... My life may be a joke, but it's still objectively way better than yours. Um, numbers dropping, right? Z basically said this morning in a roundabout way, you're too black for him. Really? Is that what he said? Uh, um, okay. John Mazio, why are you, why are you not here anymore? Why do I have to hear every day, third party, that things are being said about my African-American, Rob Cleveland? Uh, even I, myself, I or him or both of us are too black? This is poppycock, boulder dash, hogwash. And what you mean is what you meant to say, Zetetic Warriors, and I'm probably going to have to delete all this because I put Charleston and White in the beginning. I fucking did it again. It's like I don't even know myself at this point done this over and over i start with something else i wind up somewhere else i want to keep this part up and i'm gonna to have to delete it all so i might have to do it again I have to say all this again um what you mean is satanic warriors that not me and rob cleveland are too black for you too scared like when you were scared of ian and all and then people with the with the glocks you said we got a glock and we're coming for you and you got scared and left for like three weeks no one knew where you were and you came back on shaken like witless protection program and you were like oh my god they threatened me with a glock i don't know if i'm ready for this online shit i'm like bro relax they're not gonna do nothing said he can't add anything when paul goes on those hip-hop panels but that's the point bro you don't think that when i go in there um you know the higher self so to speak says what the fuck am i going to add to this uh, and then i just do what i do right I, I put a foot in the door and i start going down a list of what the fuck is important and what motherfuckers need to know and what i know is going to trigger them because they don't want to know it most of the time with these panels, I feel like I can't add anything to this meaningless, low-level conversation. So I just fucking pipe it up a bit. Right? No one told you you got to go in and fucking play beta to everybody. I told you that. No one told you you got to go in and, and go with the flow. That's not even fun. Right? Go in and pipe it up. Change directions. Pivot. Go down a list of things these slaves don't know and need to know.
you can do whatever you want if you got enough confidence. You got enough results to back you for long enough. I'll go anywhere with anybody and say whatever the fuck I want. And I'll usually get favorable results. Because a lot of times it's the way you say it and the energy behind it. So it's not about being black. You learn that coming up with black people. You just need to say what the fuck you think and feel and stand on it. Um, and if you do something, you need to stand on it. Because there's going to be accountability. There's going to be consequences. I don't care if it's in the home. Mama's going to beat on you. Uh, mama's might beat on you if you don't fight for yourself. That's how, you know, kind of, that's kind of twisted in a way, but in that culture in a lot of ways, uh, you know, there's no daddy in the home. So mama has to be daddy sometimes. Uh, and if she hears you're walking home from school and you let somebody play with you and take your shit and you didn't stand up for yourself, she might whoop your ass and, or, take you back up the block to that kid and say, you're going to fight him now and you're going to teach him not to take your shit. So, you know, I guess coming up around black people, quote unquote, folks who are darker than me with a different culture, if you could call it that, um, you start to realize there's different levels of accountability and consequences for thoughts, emotions, actions, different behaviors. So, um, yeah, I mean, I think there's something to learn there, whether that's dysfunctional or not, because you could argue there's a coming of age story there. There's a finding yourself story there. There's also a bit of could be fear and, and loss of trust. You know, if these are people who are supposed to keep you safe and lead you and they're putting you in danger, yes, they may teach you a lot about yourself. Um, I don't know. Uh, I haven't been in that situation. I have to take it side by side and I'd have to look at the consequences. Uh, and I think it's an age thing too, right? Um, at one certain point, because again, it's one thing to, 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 to teach a young person, Hey, you got to learn to defend yourself. We're going to train you a little bit. Um, if this happens again, here's how you deal with it versus whooping on them, calling them a bitch, humiliating them, and then bringing them up the block to get their ass whooped again. Possibly. Uh, I don't, you know, there's, there's a lot there. Different morals and standards. Uh, yeah, you could call it that. I think there's a miscommunication a lot of times about morals versus ethics. Morals, as far as I understand it, is more about loss, injury, and harm. It's right from wrong. Ethics is more about how you conduct yourself that may be perceived by others as undesirable or not something that's typically done, but it's not a wrongdoing objectively. If that makes sense. So, you know, like putting up a, a panel saying, hey, you could contribute and donate to put more time on the clock or put it down. Some folks might argue it's not ethical. Um, I could play the, the advocate and argue against myself what their argument would be about ethics. Uh, it's not a moral. There's no loss, injury, and harm. It's a voluntary process. If you don't want to be part of it, you don't have to be. So... And some folks will, might argue, well, it's unethical because most people are slaves and they're ignorant and can't manage their own affairs. So if you give them any opportunity to contribute anything based on an emotional response, you're manipulating them. You might be able to make that argument. Uh, but then again, you're, you're, you're taking away from folks' personal responsibility and accountability, and that's part of the problem. So. Like, you know, it's like Talcott. Antoine will will laugh and giggle and say, Jack is a bag chaser now because he went and signed up for the Patreon and I guess gave him extra money probably to work together, a.k.a. Antoine show up and talk and get him numbers. Um, you know, there was a time, like I've said, Talcott was contributing to me and after two or three days of it, I said, Talcott, I really don't feel comfortable with this because from what you've said and shown, you have a habit of mismanaging your funds and I think that you're askew in your perspective. Right. I know I call him insane or whatever because he does the same thing over and over, expecting different results. But really, when I told him face to face, I'm like, I really just honestly think that you have a skewed perspective on reality and that you you're you're you ask what is real. And I don't think you're in touch with reality as the rest of us or many of us or some of us experience as I perceive it. 
<clears throat> so I told him, I really don't feel comfortable. You know, most people, hey, you're going to give me a hundred bucks every few days? Great. I felt uncomfortable about it. I felt it was unethical to take money from people who I see as unable to manage their own affairs and are squandering their resources, even if it's better for me. And that's pretty much the law of the game, right? Uh, the resources leave those who can't manage them and go to people who can manage them better. So in a way, you could argue it's a law of currency exchange and that you could give everyone a billion dollars. And if you gave everyone five years, all the, the fiat would be transferred back to pretty much the same people who had it because it would leave those who mismanage it and it would be attracted to those who could manage it and reinvest it and turn it into more and more and more. Um, but yeah, I just personally, regardless of what I could do with it and whether I see that law of currency exchange or not on one level, it doesn't feel right to me. It feels unethical. I don't like selling drugs. I don't know how I got on this topic, but selling drugs isn't immoral. It's two consenting adults trading a product for value, which is their right. But you could argue it's unethical, and that's my perspective. Regardless on what profit I could make on any substance, I don't do it. Because A, um, I don't want to be part of that and deal with the consequences. B, it's unethical to me doesn't matter what everybody wants, what they're willing to pay for. Most of these people are lost, broken, confused, and addicted. And I don't want to be part of giving them something that's going to kill themselves and people around them. I don't want to give them something that's going to be part of them accepting less for themselves and everyone around them. I don't want to be part of that process. So even if it's not immoral, it's unethical, and that's why I'm not involved in it. That's that mentality, right? Not everything you could do, you, know, you should do. And most people in the world live like that. If you can do it, you should do it because someone else is going to do it. Oh, we're, you know, we're all consenting adults. If you're grown and you want this, I'll give it to you for this. Someone else is going to get that money if I don't, right? So I'm just going to do it anyway, right? It's not immoral. Yeah, but it's unethical. If everyone just does whatever they can do that they shouldn't do, we create a community and a population of folks who are infidels who accept less for themselves and each other. And that's not a community. That's not righteousness. That's the that's divisionist dysfunction. <clears throat> Fairly early for 80, 90 folks to be on. They got to catch a live. What? So all of a sudden now you ain't catching lives like I ain't been on all, uh, pretty much not all day, but four or five hours a day at this point. Yeah, I guess come on up and you know we'll have a conversation if that's what you want to do. I guess uh, I guess I could keep this one on and add it out the beginning. This would be good monologue. Sometimes I think Paul is an AI version of my conscience. Is this real man? I believe it's in every man, however, it's a choice. My schedule's insane. I'm not on here as much as I'd like. Well, that's probably a good thing. Um, I've pretty much forced myself to pull away from this at a lot of times because I know it's dysfunctional and healthy and everybody's addicted to it. Doesn't matter if I'm getting a bag. Doesn't matter if I'm growing a media empire. Uh, it's not functional. It's not healthy. It's not natural. Let's not forget, I'm on here with a bunch of insane people a lot of the time. Not functional, not healthy, not natural. This is more healthy and functional and natural. I could sit in here by the window, by the sun, uh, speak and express whatever's inside and what I'm you know, feeling and thinking or viewing, imagining in my imagination or through my experience and not having to hear the chattel slaves, the chattering of chattel slaves, for the most part, valueless, useless, worthless, fruitless, feckless, factless, faithless. 
a lot of times faceless, the faceless, feckless, factless, fruitless slaves, right? Got you five F's in there. It's more than an alliteration. Your thoughts, expert panel? Oh, that's right. There's no one here to destroy this broadcast. No one here to interfere. I'm looking off at the mountains in the distance, taking in all that silence. I like that. That was dope. I like that. I got to come up with my own new phrase like Joe Cool. You're a dope. I didn't like that. So I find that like he's always saying that was dope. I like that. And I'm always thinking in my head, you're a dope. I didn't like that. But they say I'm negative a lot of the time. I think I'm realistic. There you go. The man is off and running now. De defecator. <laughs> The deleterious, defalcating, defecator, demon doofuses. No, no, no. You, you, can't, you can't end it off with a word like doofus. It just doesn't have that gravitas. If you're going to do that, you got to say. Deleterious, defalcating, defecator, disempowered demons. Beyond a doofus, it's a complete blasphemy to creation. Ignoring reality is not positivity, right? That is, in fact, negativity. This is the inversion land. So when they tell you it's positivity, it's actually a form of negativity because it's a negative outcome to only focus on positivity. If you only focus on what you see as positive to your inner space, what feels good to you, you will ignore a whole aspect of reality that you need to move forward. So being only positive and only searching for positive interactions is one of the most negative things you could do for your growth and development is what I've learned. I'm no expert. I'm no official. Benton creature, I mean, you could come up. You know, certain folks could come up. And and reboot, new stream, pondering Paul and a willful white gorilla. I don't know. It's a little too much. A little too much on the title there for me. A little too pretentious. Yeah, I guess you're really onto something when you turn your negative experiences into a positive outlook. That's when I think you're onto something. Rather than only seeking something that creates a positive experience within you, it is better to experience all things uh, as long as you're not engaged in loss, injury, and harm, and then learn to take what seems negative and turn it into a positive outlook, lifestyle, and ideology, if that makes sense. All right, maybe I'll, I'll play my white gorilla video again because I enjoy it so much. And I'll cut it, and we'll come back in. Oh, we'll come back in in an hour, an hour or so, maybe an hour and a half. We'll do the regular broadcast, the official broadcast. It's far from regular. All right, You can't even refer to your own broadcast as regular if it's the broadcast I do. The ex extraordinary broadcast is what we'll be doing. The regularly scheduled extraordinary broadcast, I would say within an hour and a half, uh, probably 
what I want, my intention is to do not much more than two hours, if that, and move on with my day. I'd like to do something today. I'd like to get out today. I'd like to search for some investments today for long-term value. Love you, Paul. Love you, brother. Thank the creator for your essence and energy. Yeah, I don't know. Something about that makes me uncomfortable. I got to be honest with you. When people say things like that. It makes me uncomfortable. Uh, you should thank the creator for your essence and energy. If there's only one self, then I am you on the highest level. Anything you admire about me, you can acquire. So thank the creator for your essence and energy and opportunity. The ability to do better for yourself today and others. If that makes sense. But I appreciate the sentiment, sir. I guess I'd rather be celebrated than tolerated. All right, where are we at here? Slave Club. Slave Club is still going. Antoine's. Black stripper hoes are dancing for Fiat. All is well. All people, including all beings, are manifestations or disguises of the total reality behind this cosmos. All you truthers don't understand that I had to look into my psychology to understand you. Right. You're all belligerent combatives. You're right. all opposition of defiance. Right. You all take up positions to find right. a cause to justify your meaningless existence. You'll fight anybody to act like you're self-righteous and true. And it doesn't get you good results, okay? When I see all these people who want to start all the interactions with everybody, not with God-given rights, not with the law of the land, not with freedom and principles, not with process on how to un unslave ourselves, but let's argue over the shape of the planet. I start thinking you're a fucking agent. These people won't even listen to legal and lawful God-given rights, property, and freedom and principles. You're not incredible. You're fucking inept. Uh, you have no self-awareness and awareness of others. You, 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 you're, you're defiant, right, and resistant, and you're not received well when you're out in the public. And that's the difference between you and I. Write it down. You're a fucking moron. So I see right through all you motherfuckers. I don't give a fuck what comes out of your mouth. Love and light. Ascension. We're all coming together for truth and freedom. You're full of shit. People in the middle of, of nowhere who have everything they need and can co-create with nature and are in touch with the Tao, the way to the way, they don't consider you wise. They consider you be a bunch of mentally and emotionally ill folks who have personality disorder. I know why you do what you do. I don't care if you won't tell anybody. I know me, so I know you. You're not the centric point of this universe. All right? At best, if you want to be, it's an I am that am presence. Confront the cause and effect. Bring the solution. You're a fucking slave. I and others have brought the solution. You won't embody it. You don't want to be a free man or woman. So don't come to me and tell me I'm raining on your parade because I'm doing what the fuck you won't. It's not that you can't. It's you won't because you're a fucking coward. Because if you don't stand for rights, freedom, and principles, you don't get them. That means you've taken mine. I don't accept that. Right? I don't respect that because you don't have a right to give up your rights. They're God-given. God can take them away. You have to embody them. If you don't, you've done wrong. You're unjust. You're an infidel. I'm talking into your spirit. I'm talking objective truth. I'm telling you what the fuck needs to happen or else. When the or else comes, I don't want to hear it. Don't you want personal choice? Don't you want property rights? Don't you want an ability to defend yourself? Don't you want the fascism to end? I want to vomit how easy it is to mind and heart control the majority of these fucking slaves. You got to put the work in. You got to put the time in. You got to show up for yourself and others. You got to have conviction. You got to live your information. You ain't doing that. They're not sitting in a fucking hole for a year, viewing themselves and reflecting and trying to find a space of peace and empowerment. They're not doing any of it. The court doesn't know you. Policy enforcement doesn't know you. The DA doesn't know you. The US corporation doesn't know you. The feds don't know you. If they do know you, it's for being a loser failure and fucking up your own affairs and mismanaging it and having to go to jail at best. This is way deeper than rap. This ain't about no court. 
This is about taking your soul and keeping you here for thousands of years. I suspect I can't prove it. You can't be nice and kind and polite with these people. You got to be a godly, righteous man, and you can't be an infidel, and you can't be equally yoked with infidel. You got a duty to render aid. You got a duty to uphold God's law. You got a duty to exercise your rights. Why the fuck ain't you doing it? But we can get in our ego and compete with each other over bullshit, or we can really be honest with ourselves and each other about where the fuck we failed ourselves and our family and our future and our lineage. That was heavy. <laughs> you got me feeling something with my own voice. Um, yeah, no, that's good shit, man. Do more of that uh, if you're into it, right? I don't want to, like, put this onto you as, like, your work, you know? Um, but, yeah, that's good shit, man. You definitely got a talent there, uh, and I want to see where that goes, you know? And, see, this is the thing, right? You could be part of an authentic flashpoint again right because every so often there's another flashpoint in a way these slaves are big on shorts because uh they got attention span issues right so if you make something like that 30 seconds a minute two minutes um and it's got clips of like like the man said people getting arrested maybe even clips of me getting arrested or being out on the street with my voice in the background and the music and some effects if i upload those right that could catch you know, that could catch a few hundred thousand, a few million people. And now you see me, you know, doing a live to four or five hundred every day, whatever, if you're into that, you know, because it's an interesting experience when the chat gets crazy. Um, you know, it's it'll be a new experience. Right. And we could see if we all like it, you know, if I like it and you don't <laughs> how it all works. Right. So, yeah, I, I'm interested to to take this. Right? I'm not necessarily desirous of it. But I'm fascinated by this whole thing, and I'd be interested to be part of that experience. It'd be it'd be a fun and interesting and exciting thing to be part of. If it's not meant to be, then that's great. You know, you just gotta surrender to the outcome. But that's how it happens, right? That's how all these other people, a lot of them, get the numbers and the views and the subscribers and everything hitting is through those shorts. I mean, they told me that and I, I figured that out. I didn't need them to tell me that I could see what they were doing when they put that on there. And I realized how people are and the whole thing. And I just, I can't say I don't have time. I'm just not motivated and ambitious enough. And I probably don't know what I need to know to do something like that at this point, what he did. So, you know, again, uh, it all kind of has to come together. People play their part and position. They got a talent. They like doing it. They know they're going to make a piece of content that's going to fucking move people. That's a moving piece right there you know, to me. And, and then I'm the one saying it. You know? So, uh, yeah, man, people who got that kind of talent and are into it and get something out of it and can be part of maybe a flashpoint, get on it, you know, because I'll post it on both channels. We'll keep that first channel alive with some kind of action and traction, bringing in new people and keeping something there to keep it in the algorithm uh and then yeah it's marketing and promotion in a way um and yeah it's a it's a movement it's a change right when people see that and feel that and hear that they're inspired to do something different so that's what a movement you know, is in a way all right i think i'm going to wrap it for now uh that's that's good shit you know, everyone's enjoying that. Do more of it. Uh, and I think that we'll all uh, be, be well, I would say be happy, but uh, we'll all enjoy enjoy the process. You know, we'll all enjoy that content and what comes of it. The new mic steps up the game to the new level, right? Well, that's what I need to do. You know, I can't accept less for myself and others. If I'm going to speak this stuff, I got to live the information on all levels. And I can't do the holy go like, well, you know, I'm a real truther and I'm not like these boys and I don't need the microphone and blah, blah, blah. Like, well, if they got microphones and got better quality to say nothing and people say that I got something to say and they like it and it moves them. And yeah, I'm going to fucking use better quality, the best quality I could get. They say this is the best, you know, rated microphone um, on there. Uh, it wasn't really, wasn't really too much either, you know, in the grand scheme of things. So Calvin Mauve was, was the original inspiration for that, or at least the original accountant for that. He was on my ass. He goes, bro, I'm sending you donation. Get a fucking mic. 
Like, I really don't want to. I don't know why I need it. I don't, I don't got power, right? Because I was working on solar. I don't want to have to run more equipment. It's like, just get the fucking mic. I'm like, all right, I'll think about it. I let it roll around for a bit. And I said, you know what? Yeah, I'm, I'm going to get the mic. The guy sends me the fucking donation. That's what the fuck he wants. He sent it to me for that. I should use it for that anyway. You know, or send it the fuck back. I even told him, I said, bro, you want me to send you the donation back? Because if I don't get the mic and you sent me the donation for that, it, it ain't right. He never kind of went anywhere with it. So I just decided pretty much at that point, I'm probably going to, you know, take that even if it's months later, whatever he sent, go get a mic with it. Because if not, it wouldn't feel right. You know, and he's probably on to something and he was probably correct. So I went with that. Uh, and people seem happy about that. So, and I think that I'm pleased with it. I've heard my voice back and it's at least uh, better quality. And if folks want to make clips with it, uh, it provides a better experience than shitty laptop audio. So all is well at this time. We're blessed, thankful, and grateful on a movement. Uh, folks are contributing and supporting. Um, and yeah, that shit, man, like I know I don't show it a lot of times here, but like even right now, that shit gets me emotional. <laughs> you know, I don't need to chase it back. I really don't because it would demean me in this process. Right. And it would interfere probably with the feeling, you know, the, the, the feelings that I get when, um, you know, when I wake up and, uh, and people are contributing and supporting and, uh, you know, I'm not on dope and, you know, my life is good. Like Aaron says, you know, life is good and all that. Uh, and I like who I am. Um, and I like what I'm a part of. I like that, you know, I'm well received and not for trying to be likable, just being me, right? So to go from, you know, what it was to what it is now, uh, can only be described as an extreme transformation, transmutation. So, you know, what, what could feel or be better than that, right? When you really get down to it. So, yeah, I mean, the, 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 the contribution and donations is just a it's just an effect of a cause, right? But to for that to be part of it and, and to be able to do what I do here, um, and not have to work uh, the kind of jobs that I did work at one point is you know, that's magical. So yeah, you know, I also have to like make sure that I do what I need to do with that, you know, and not take advantage of that and not get caught up so all right enough cupcaking <laughs> enough uh coffee talk i'm gonna i'm gonna cut it within an hour and a half i'd say i'll probably put the i'll probably put the there's my moat creature <laughs> rca my moat creature um yeah man it's i am that am is magical right the saying about you or me if I'm magical, then you are too, right? Or a miracle, as you said. If I'm a miracle, then you are too. You know, I can't live in a world where I'm the only one. Shit would fuck me up and everybody else. So you know, just remember anything that you say about me, if it's not true about you now, it could be true about you if you worked at it, if you applied yourself, if you got to a space where you really knew who and what you were and what you weren't, and willing to stand on that and speak that in all times, at all places, with all people. Um, so yeah, anything that I am, you either are or may become, and that's one thing that we can't lose sight of. All right. I'm going to go set it. I'm going to set the notification. I'm going to get a thumbnail together. Uh, we'll get on it. Breaking news. A uh, little bit of Watson. We'll open up the panel. We'll have the interrogatories and colloquy, if you will. We'll see where it goes. All right, I'm out of here.